The Land of Roar, Chapter 41 Rose puts two fingers to her lips and whistles. She does it again and again. No one can hear you, calls Crokey in a sing-song voice. Just as Bad Dragon's snout appears over the side of the pit, followed by her enormous craggy head. She sniffs the air curiously. Rose whistles again and again, but I can't believe the sound can travel through all the twisting stone passageways back to the sea cave. Sit back and enjoy the show, Rose, says Crokey. Although I should warn you, Bad Dragon is a very messy eater. Arthur, you might like to step to one side. We don't want her thinking you're dessert. Arthur, Grandad tugs on my sleeve. Am I right in thinking a dragon of the bad variety is crawling out of that hole with the intention of eating me? His voice is surprisingly calm, even though the flames billowing from the pit are making him drip with sweat. Yes, that's pretty much it. We're sitting in her feeding area. He tries to push me away. Then get away from me! I shake my head and watch as Bad Dragon starts to heave herself out of the hole. Rose! I shout. Can't you stop her? You used to be able to make her roll over with one click of your fingers. Gubood. Guburl, says Rose gently. Kuboom, taboo. Bad Dragon twists her head towards Rose and stares at her, eyes narrowed. Suddenly, her jaws snap open and she sends out a blast of fire that makes Rose stagger back. Crokey laughs. You're just a tasty morsel to her now. No different to any of the other snacks I toss down there. Bad Dragon's claws grip the edge of the pit and her eyes slide back towards her feeding ledge and me and Grandad. And that's when I hear a distant thud, thud, thud of pounding feet. The thuds get louder and there's a smashing sound as if something is bashing against the walls of the tunnel. Then there's a huge crash as something slams into the door. The thick wood splinters but it doesn't break. Up on the gallery, Crokey snarls with annoyance. Suddenly, Wynne's face appears at the bars. His eyes widen in horror. Guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but Bad Dragon is like, right there? Behind him, I can see two large bodies, one red and the other blue. It's Pickle and Vlad. Rose runs to the door. Help me get Pickle and Vlad to breathe fire on the door. We don't need to burn it down, Arthur. You distract Bad Dragon. What? How do I do that? Think of something. Rose starts issuing a series of obby dobby commands to Pickle and Vlad. All Bad Drags, all Bad Dragon's greedy attention is focused on Grandad. Oi! I shout, waving my arms around and moving away from Grandad. Over here, you big ugly beast! Bad Dragon ignores me and snarls at Grandad, singeing the edge of his blanket. I feel in my pockets and pull out the first thing I find, Grandad's carrot keyring. I hurl it at Bad Dragon's head, but with one puff of fire she turns it to ash. At least I've got her attention. Her eyes narrow again and she stares hard at me. Arthur, do something quickly, cries Rose. So I start randomly moving my arms and legs around and yelling and shouting. Before I know what I'm doing, I'm dancing. I do the whip and the nay-nay and the floss. And because Bad Dragon is still staring at me, mesmerised, I don't stop. I dance like Dad, flapping my arms like a chicken and jerking my knees up and down. Whoop! goes Grandad. Here comes the beat, Arthur! And he starts making strange sounds and I realise he's beatboxing. What are you doing? sneers Crokey. What does it look like I'm doing? I shout. I'm dancing! I attempt to moonwalk, fall over and Bad Dragon incinerates my entrainers. 
I yelp and clutch at my burning heels while Bad Dragon turns away to sniff out Grandad, drawn to his squeaky noises. Be quiet, Grandad, I yell, and Crokey hangs over the wall of the gallery, shaking with laughter. Just a few more seconds, shouts Rose. She's pressed against the wall of the chamber, keeping back from the barrage of flames that's hammering the door. Suddenly, Bad Dragon lunges, snatching up Grandad's blanket blanket and tossing it into the pit. Blimey, cries Grandad. I cut my hands around my mouth. Wynne, chuck me with your wand. From the hatch in the door, Wynne's wand comes flying through the air. I make a grab for it, but it doesn't quite reach me and lands on Bad Dragon's back. Before I can take a step towards it, there's a bang and a flash of pink stars and suddenly Wynne is sitting on Bad Dragon his mouth hanging open. I did it! I did an awesome spell! Did everyone see? I just said the first thing that came into my head and I flew, or disappeared, or dissolved, or something. Bad Dragon whips her head around to see who's making all the noise and that's when Wynne realises where he is. Ah! I'm sitting on Bad Dragon! Help me, Arthur! Help me! With one twitch of her body, Bad Dragon tosses Wynne to the ground. I drag him back next to Grandad, then the three of us sit squashed together as Bad Dragon leans over us. Her black tongue starts flicking around our faces like she's tasting us one by one. I shut my eyes as she turns her attention to me. The heat is almost unbearable and the stench of sulphur makes me dizzy. Just when I think I can't stand it any longer, there's an almighty crash and I open my eyes to see Pickle forcing his way through the burning door with Vlad close behind him. Bad Dragon must think they're after her food because her spikes ripple and she breathes a blast of flames right at them. Vlad responds with his own barrage of fire and then the chamber becomes an inferno. Grandad, Wynne and I cover our heads to protect ourselves from the sparks that rain down. While Vlad and Bad Dragon battle with fire, Rose guides Pickle closer to the edge of the pit. Wynne! Arthur! Move! she calls, before instructing Pickle to Mabelt! The Bose! Chobanes! All it takes is one carefully directed flame and Grandad's chains turn into molten liquid. Ow! 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 He cries, rubbing his ankles. But Wynne and I are already pulling him up. Above us, Crokey screams with rage. He can't move. He's trapped on the gallery by the flames. Rose leads Pickle even closer to the edge of the pit, and he stretches his neck towards us. He can't quite reach, but Wynne is still able to jump across onto his huge head. Next, it's Grandad's turn. I can hardly bear to look as he leaps blindly towards the dragon's head. But Wynne grabs hold of his cardigan and hauls him to safety. I follow, then the three of us slip and slide across Pickle's neck until we're squashed together on his back. Rose helps me down, but waves Wynne back. Stay on Pickle, she says. Get Grandad out of here. Oh no, says Grandad, shaking his head. I'm not going anywhere without you two. I'm still the grown-up here. Grandad, Rose's voice is firm. We know what we're doing. You're in our world now. Stay with Wynne and we'll follow on Vlad. Then, before he can protest, Rose slaps Pickle's side and cries, Go bet! About! A boff! Pickle spins around and Grandad has no choice but to throw his arms around Wynne as they lurch through the smouldering door and disappear down the smoke-filled passageway. Rose and I run towards Vlad. A cry makes me look up. Now the flames have stopped, Crokey is standing on the edge of the balcony. He throws himself towards us, wings spread wide, screaming, You will never escape! Rose has scrambled onto Vlad's back. Arthur! Her hand stretches towards mine and I take a leap and grab it. I'm climbing up Vlad's back when a scratchy hand clamps around my ankle. As Vlad lumbers towards the doorway, Crokey tries to drag me off the dragon's back. 
I kick out again and again and manage to wrench my foot free just as Vlad jumps out forward. I keep hold of Rose's hand as we tumble out of the chamber and into the darkness of the passageway. Vlad picks up speed and I pull myself onto his back as flames and smoke and Crokey's cries of rage chase after us.